My BFI player choice this week is a haunting 70s classic from Australian director Peter Weir, who once told me that a defining feature of his movies was an attempt not to let any individual style come between the story and the audience. If I let myself dominate too much, he told me on stage at BAFTA, then I won't see. I'll just see my own reflection. Well, ironic then that this eerie masterpiece should have become a stylistic textbook for so many filmmakers whose work has been influenced by the endless enigma of Picnic at Hanging Rock. When are we going home? When are we going home? Miranda? Described by Philip French as the first true masterpiece of Australian cinema, Picnic at Hanging Rock recounts the disappearance of a party of schoolgirls and their teacher on Valentine's Day 1900. It's based on a 1967 novel by Joan Lindsay, which begins with the enigmatic declaration that whether this story is true or not, the characters are long since dead, so it hardly seems to matter. Well, that book was brought to Weir by Patricia Lovell, who'd been impressed by his 1971 feature Homesdale, and who thought he'd be perfect to put this story on screen. Weir was captivated by the novel and anxious to turn it into a movie, but first he had to effectively audition for Lindsay, whom he asked, against the advice of everyone, whether the story was indeed true. Her response was to tell him never to ask that question again. Superbly lensed by Russell Boyd, who won a BAFTA for Best Cinematography, Picnic at Hanging Rock became a touchstone text not only of the Australian New Wave, but of international independent and arthouse cinema. You can see its influences in everything, from Sofia Coppola's The Virgin Suicides to Carol Morley's The Falling, both of which owe a weighty debt to its air of studied ambiguity, heightened in the 1998 director's cut, which deleted several scenes present in the original release. Weir would go on to direct such diverse fare as Gallipoli, The Year of Living Dangerously, Dead Poet Society, and perhaps most famously The Truman Show. But this remains his most extraordinary work. <laughs>